Hello and welcome to another episode of Leaders of Transformation. Today we're going to talk with Jake Badsgard. He is disrupting the digital advertising industry through his company. We're going to talk about pay-per-click. We're going to talk about entrepreneurship, being passionate about what you do and how you can make an impact uh, through your business. A lot of good uh, topics that we're going to cover here. I'm just really excited to have him here. Jake, welcome to Leaders of Transformation. Thanks for having me, Nicole. Excited to be here. Oh, I'm excited to have you here. And a shout out to Interview Connections for making this introduction. I am so grateful to the booking agents that send me amazing guests like Jake. And, uh, you know, it, it just makes our podcast that, that much more successful when we can bring uh, people that are difference makers and world changers uh, to our audience. And with that in mind, thank you for listening, tuning in, uh, whether you're watching, whether you're listening, we're just glad you're here because you're the reason why we do this podcast. We want to inspire you. We want to educate you, give you the tools that you need to be able to be the difference maker that you're capable of being. And, you know, maybe it just gives you some ideas and you say, wow, you know what, I've got my business. I don't really see it as, you know, making an impact per se out there in the world. But, you know, as you, as you hear what Jake does, and how he does it and how he even contributes back to his community. You'll see there's a lot of ways that you can do that as well. We hope that will inspire you to take that on with you and your, also with your team. Love to hear your stories about how you're doing that. You can go to leadersoftransformation.com, send, uh, send us a note there. You can, of course can also go on social media and uh, find us there We're on all the different most social media platforms. Also, if you like this episode, please go on iTunes and leave us a rating and review. It really makes uh, a difference in terms of the amount of reach that we can get and the people that we can impact. We're in over 120 countries and we just want to continue to uh, you know, extend that reach out. So we appreciate you doing that. Now, let me give you a little bit more background on Jake. Um, after growing his first uh, pay-per-click client, uh, and helping them to grow from 25 to 250 employees, he realized he had a gift for using pay-per-click marketing to drive dramatic business results. Uh, to help more companies succeed online, he founded Disruptive Advertising, a pay-per-click and CRO management agency, and they've helped hundreds of companies realize unprecedented growth and profitability from online advertising. In the first uh, four years since its founding, uh, they have grown from two employees uh, in Jake's basement to an agency of over 90 employees and a run rate of over 12 million, placing it 145, number 145, on the 2017 Inc. 500 list. And uh, he's also a regular contributor on sites like Forbes, Entrepreneur, uh, Search Engine Land, Market, Marketing Land, uh, and many others. And so I'm just really, yeah, I said I'm really grateful that he's here and he's going to be talking to us. Uh, give us some insight into this world of digital advertising. So, um, but let's start off because he's more than just a, a pay-per-click expert. He's also very passionate about what he's doing and he's on mission. So maybe Jake, let's start off with talking about that. Like, what are you most passionate about? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a passionate individual. Anyone that knows me knows that that passion never stays on the inside. Whatever I'm feeling comes on the outside too. And I love, I think life is awesome. I love the journey of the challenges, um, the successes, the failures, all of it. And uh, more recently, we've actually, uh, even, even from the time that we were connected, we're actually almost double the size um, uh, from when we originally got connected. So things are really taking off over here. And I've, I, kind of had this epiphany a couple of years ago where I realized, what am I really, what am I really after here? What, do, what am I really passionate about? What do I really want? As an entrepreneur, everyone always kind of barrages you with what's your exit strategy. Um, and Nicole, I, what I, I just never felt comfortable with it because I'm like, what if I don't want an exit strategy? What if I just love what I do and I want to do it forever? Like, does that make me a bad entrepreneur? And so I always struggled with that a little bit. Uh, until I met with like a valuation expert and uh, he did a presentation for a group of entrepreneurs that I was a part of. And afterwards I went and kind of just pulled him aside and we chatted for a little bit and I said, I don't know what to do, right? Like, I don't know that I, this is the path I want to go down, but I feel like I'm supposed to. And he said, well, 
Jake, let me just ask you a few questions. And, and he proceeded to ask things like, well, what's your top line? What's your bottom line? Do you see the summit? Do you enjoy what you do? And just proceeded to ask me these questions. And he said, well, I'll bet you've already had interest in people buying your business. And I'm like, yeah, pretty regularly. Um, and he said, they probably offer you plus or minus this range, about this amount. And I'm like, yeah, you're spot on. You know, he's an expert. And he said, well, this is why they're offering that to you. Based on your growth rate, your profitability, and your top line revenue, they're going to come in. They're going to pay their initial investment back. And then they're going to be sitting on the asset four or five years from now, and it will have grown. And then they're either going to flip it or continue to, to monetize that. And he said, you can totally do the same thing if you want. And I'm like, huh, interesting. And it was just kind of that moment where it just like freed my brain and my heart to just be like, I don't have to have an exit strategy. I don't need to build something to sell it. I can just do that myself and enjoy the process and reap the benefits personally, financially, all of those things. And so that's where it kind of changed why I was running disruptive advertising. And what I became a lot more passionate about was having disruptive advertising become an avenue for myself and the other people that were here to create an environment of growth personally, professionally, and financially. Because I want to continue to grow personally, professionally, and financially. And I want to create an environment where anyone that comes to disruptive can do the same thing. And so that's where I kind of got the, the genesis of the idea that I'm the most passionate about currently, which is a personal leadership development course that I now teach optionally before business hours at the company. And I've invested a lot of time, money, and resources into personal therapy, marriage counseling, business coaching, um, a lot. And I've kind of just taken some of the things that were the most impactful for me personally and put that into a course that I allow people to sign up for at the company. And there is a cost to sign up for that course. Um, if they graduate, they get their investment back and I actually give them a bonus to boot on top of that. But it comes with a really high degree of accountability. It's an early class. It's before business hours. And, um, and, and that's what I'm passionate about right now. Because when I do that, the level of accountability that it gives me to grow personally, professionally, is immense and it allows me to up my game every time I teach this class because I do it with them. I don't just teach it and expect them to do it, right? Um, and that's what I'm passionate about. That's what I love. And it's interesting to see how that's bleeding through into the success of the business because people feel that I care about them because I do. Um, and, I'm, and I'm emulating and, and leading by example. And it's just a fun process. Um, and that's what I'm the most passionate about right now. Well, I love that. It's such a brilliant idea. I mean, there's a lot of talk about we got to train our people to be more innovative, to be more agile, to, you know, to be better communicators and all of this. But when you make it optional and give people the opportunity to learn and grow, number one, that tells me that uh, they respect you and they want to learn from you. Um, so as a leader, they respect you and who you are as your example. Um, but also it just, it's, it creates, it's this culture that you're creating of personal development that where well, it's optional, but it's encouraged at the same time. And yeah. I, I love that. I love that. You know, and now if you think about like in the beginning, I was saying about how people that are listening, if they're, you know, they have a company where they can do something very similar. That's a perfect example. A lot of times leaders are thinking about how can I go into consulting and do that? Well, what about just it within your own organization? I mean, you can make a huge impact. Uh, the ripple effect, I forget who it was. I think it was uh, Nick Murphy or somebody that said, or maybe it was Shannon Graham, who said um, ROI, they look at ROI as being the ripple of impact. What is your ripple of impact? You know, and, and measuring that through your organization. I do believe that, businesses, you know, yeah, they need to make profit, but I think business is designed and meant to be able to give you the opportunity to create value in the marketplace and leaders responsibility and opportunity is to create an arena for their people to do the same thing, to create value in the marketplace. And that's exactly what you're talking about here. So I love it. Well, and what's funny is I don't even teach anything industry specific in that class. It's all about per developing good personal habits 
Um, understanding the influence and impact we have in the world comes by changing ourselves, not trying to change other people and having a vision of, of who we are and who we want to be and, and putting plans together for that. And it has nothing to do with online advertising yeah. in the class. Yet it translates into disciplined people with a vision that become way better advertisers as well. Yeah, absolutely. So how many, what, what percentage of your employees are actually taking advantage of that? Yeah, so it's optional. Um, just starting my second round of that class now. Mm -hmm. uh, the first round, I had 38 people sign up for it, and I actually had to do two sections of it. And wow. currently, it's the, the enrollment for the second uh, set of the courses is happening right now. It looks like I'll probably have about another 25 to 30 people in it. That's fantastic. Well, that's a high percentage of your people that are actually doing it. Yeah. Yeah, that is good. So let's, I mean, you, you were in corporate. And then you left and went and became an entrepreneur. What, what caused, I mean, I, I allude to the fact that, wow, you, you created this great success since so you decided to launch this company. Um, but what's like for you, what's the difference? Why, why own the company versus working? There's a lot of, a lot of great companies out there in that space to work yeah. on you know, doing your own. You know, it, it's interesting. I don't know that I ever would have left uh, and started my own business. Uh, had had a few things been a little bit different. I mean, I've had a, I grew up in a family of 10 kids. I've had a job since I was eight years old, delivering papers. Um, never had a job I didn't like. And what happens is that there's, there's I think there's just this natural course that uh, occurs at a place of employment where I kind of develop as much as I'm going to develop in this environment. Mm -hmm. And once I reach that threshold, there's no ill will towards that organization. It's just an understanding of, oh, I've kind of like, I've kind of peaked here and I'm looking for that next opportunity to continue to grow and develop. Yeah. And, in and in corporate America, and, and my experience with it, I guess that's really all I can speak to, is I just kind of hit that plateau, right? Like, I remember distinctly sitting down for an annual review and saying, okay, you know, way outperformed my peer set. It was a great year, really developed and progressed. And then to get the feedback of here's your, you know, percent raise and good job and let's keep going. And just having that moment of realizing like, oh, if I stay here, I'm going to start getting complacent. I'm going to stop being an A player the way that I want to be an A player. And it's not even their fault. This is just the environment. It is what it is. And I, it's time for me to go and look for something different. And so that, it, just moments like that, and then realizing that ultimately I do have a, have a high need for control <laughs> and, and a really strong ambition for growth. And ultimately, the only way I found that, that kind of gives me that limitless, what I feel like is limitless opportunity, was creating my own business and very passionately trying to have it be an environment that it can do that for other people. And the reality is we're not successful all the time with that, with everybody else. And I wish that we could be, but you know, that's, that's not necessarily always how it works because people are looking to grow in different ways. And, um, but that's, that's ultimately what led, what led me to here. And then what I loved about my experience is it just, I took a few years just developing a really good skill set. And that's the one thing that I think a lot of people can forget is you got to get really good at something before you go and venture off on your own. Otherwise you just don't have that much to offer. Like intentions are great, but actual skills really matter. The yeah, ability... like talk about what's, what skills specifically. So in my situation, um, the first few years of my career, I helped companies uh, implement and have really good web analytics so that mm -hmm. they could see how well their digital marketing campaigns were performing. And we could actually tie that into their customer database, tie it into revenue so that we knew, oh, they filled out the lead form on your website, but did it actually turn into revenue for your organization? Mm -hmm. And so what I got really good at was understanding all types of business models and how to track marketing success and tie it all together. That's what I got really good at. And then naturally what happened? I built a marketing agency that helps people connect the dots with their data, and then we can actually help them implement on now that we know what's working and what's not, let's go make the appropriate changes. And that's what companies hire us to do, primarily on Google and Facebook, where it's a little easier for us to track uh, performance and those types of things that are going on.
But I think it's the same thing if I'm like, if I get really good at being a plumber, it doesn't necessarily need, mean, mean that I need to run my own plumbing business, but I'm certainly going to be a lot better at it if I'm good at it, right? Yeah. To me, I think it's just develop a really good, strong skill set, whether that be an accountant, a plumber, digital marketing, whatever. I'm a, just a big believer in really developing the hard skills first. And then yeah. once those are kind of there, then I think the opportunities just begin to manifest and present themselves endlessly at that point. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because there's a lot of people that um, love the control, right? They get into becoming an entrepreneur um, and actually don't value, to great point, they don't value the, uh, the experience and the opportunity they have in corporate. So I've had clients of mine who have, uh, have said, you know, I, I want to go out on my own. And, uh, but I know that I need to save up money or whatever, prepare for that. And I say, well, while you're working for that company, what can you be doing to maximize the opportunity there? And that's what you're talking about. Like, if you can get to the point where you have a track record, you're basically getting paid to learn, potentially, if you've got the right environment to do that, you can get paid to get really good at what you do and then leverage that in your own business as opposed to, no, 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 I'm going to go on my own. I'm going to figure this out. Well, you can do it, but it's a tougher go at it. And you know, you don't have the track record. You don't have the testimonial. You can't say you work for X, Y, Z company. I mean, people do look at those things and certainly confidence and you know, all of that sells too. But you know, you, like you said, you, you got to know what you're doing. So Yeah. yeah. And, and it can work both ways. Everyone breaks every norm. What I commonly see is people that weren't that successful in their jobs are also not that successful as entrepreneurs. Um, I think it kind of follows people around because I think it's a demonstration of commitment, discipline. Um, and, and so that's, that's the only area that I would encourage people to be careful with is you can do it either way and you can pave your own path. Let's just make sure that we're at least keeping those things in consideration in terms of, am I doing this for the right reasons? And is timing right? And then, and if if the answer is, yeah, then I I don't think there's any mold that anyone has to follow. I certainly don't want to be put into a mold. (laughs) Well, and I certainly didn't follow any mold and and stuck in a mold either. But yeah, if you want to be a great leader, first of all, you got to be a good follower and be able to, and, and not saying a follower isn't getting caught in that mindset, but uh, it's like the student. Before you can be the teacher, you, you, get, you get to be the student uh, first. So, yeah, that's good. What, what has been your biggest challenge? And then we're going to talk about some pay-per-click and you can give us some, you know, some insight there. But I'd love to hear what, is your, what has been your biggest challenge as a leader, growing a team and growing fast with your team? Yeah. Well, I think this encompasses most aspects of my life uh, is that I had a lot of fundamental issues with, with myself personally that I really used um, business to mask. And so for me, business was, was great and I learned a lot from it, but, but oftentimes I felt subconsciously, it's like, if you take that away from me, who am I? And do I even like that person? Mm. And so I would actually say that's been my number one challenge. Um, And what's interesting is that when there is a certain degree of professional success, we use that as a justification to, you know, areas that I use that in an unhealthy way where, well, because I'm successful in business, therefore, clearly I'm contributing more to my marriage. Mm. Right? Yeah. Totally wrong. But, yeah. I, you know, in hindsight, I saw that I did that quite a bit. Um, very unhealthy and not productive uh, in, in a relationship. And realized I had some work to do there. Um, I also found that I used it as a justification to forgive bad habits um, that I had built in my own life. Well, but I've got, but I've got a business that's growing. So, therefore, my uh, unhealthy lifestyle or some of these other things that are going on clearly aren't that big of a deal because I've got this over here. And so I would say the number one challenge that I had as a leader was like getting my own shit together and Mm -hmm. and understanding like how to become the best version of myself for the right reasons and not use business as a crux to justify 
inappropriate behavior or, um, or behaving the wrong way in a relationship. And so that was really my number one challenge. And working on that has helped me with my leaders more than anything else, rather than trying to fix them. <laughs> and uh, it happens a lot more naturally when I approach it that way, rather than trying to come up with ways to fix my leaders. Uh, I feel like the better leader I am, the more naturally I am uh, helping them grow and progress as well. And so that's, that's how I'd answer your question. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a humility that I that I hear in you. And there's also a, a sense of self awareness. And this comes up a lot as I've interviewed hundreds of, of leaders is this, uh, you know, they have a self awareness, you know, varying degrees of self awareness. And I think we are constantly on that, you know, self discovery and self awareness journey of discovering more things about ourselves, but um, you definitely do. You, you know, you've got this awareness of, you know, even just like, and thank you for sharing that. I mean, that's pretty personal and, um, and it indicates that you've, you know, you've given it some thought, you know, in terms of uh, looking at yourself and how can you be a better leader? And then to be, it's funny because I've had clients who have said to me, you know, you got to come in and fix my people. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> Let's yeah, start. And right. I've, been, Let's start right. I've been, I've been that person, <laughs> you know, but uh, anyway, no, that's, that's really good. All right. So let's talk about uh, pay-per-click. Now you mentioned that in some of the material that I got from you and it's on your website, 50, I'm sorry, 76% of AdWords and Facebook ad budgets are wasted. That's a lot. So how, how do we, why is that happening? And why, why, how can we avoid that? You know, unfortunately that doesn't mean that the other 24% is profitable either. It yeah. just means it produced at least something. And what I, one of the things that There's I, There's a lot of mud being thrown up against the wall right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 And unfortunately most people and even agencies just aren't even aware that that's the case because of the mm -hmm. way that they're approaching it and the assumptions that are being made. And uh, one of the things that I really love about pay-per-click advertising is that when done correctly, it's very, very trackable to actual revenue. And, and in so doing, you can really identify what's working and what's not. And let's put the money where it's producing for us and pull back from the other areas. Mm -hmm. what hap there's just a few common mistakes that almost every company makes. Number one, paid advertising online is not the best place to start. Um, we have, at this point as an organization, we have eight to 800 to 1,000 businesses a month reaching out to us. And they think that because of the content that they've read by us or our ads or the things that we do for ourselves for our own marketing and reputation, oh, well, clearly advertising on Google or Facebook and Instagram is the silver bullet that will solve all of my problems as a business. And um, guess what? Reality check. If you don't have a good product or service, no advertising fixes that. Um, if you don't have sustainable revenue and profits, guess what? Advertising is really expensive and that might not be the right place to start from an advertising standpoint. So a lot of people go in and start advertising on Google and Facebook, have a panic attack because this is real dollars going out the door and I'm not seeing real dollars come back in the door. And so I kind of freak out. And the way that they approach that, number one, is it maybe shouldn't have even started there to begin with. <laughs> and the second thing is, when it is the right time to invest in those channels, is there is a right and a wrong way to do that. Number one, a lot of people take a really small budget and try to have a really broad marketing campaign. So they spend X amount of dollars, let's say they spend a thousand bucks, but they spend it so broadly that at the end of it, they don't even know all they know is did it work or did it not that they couldn't even say why because they've spread it so thin across so many different keywords or audiences or whatever that is that there's no significance behind anything that happened it's just like i flipped a coin and either i got a new client or customer or i didn't and i yeah, can't, can't even duplicate. tell you why they can't, yeah, duplicate, they can't duplicate it then. yeah and so when the time is right to advertise it's guess what it's actually easier than you think i'm going to be so simple and so specific that the, that the victory from this marketing campaign is simply going to be whether or not 
this was the right approach to be taking because I've condensed the budget into one area. I'm testing one pain point, one audience, and I'm seeing how that works with some statistical significance. And whether it produced a financial ROI or not, I learned something about my, cust my potential customers and how to appropriately address them in the future. And, and so that's when, when marketing is done correctly, every single thing that I do is a victory because I learn just as much, if not more, from what didn't work as what did work, as long as I go about it in the right way. And the right way starts with, there's all types of customers that I could be working with. Which ones are the ones I want to work with the most? For most companies, 80% of profits, and oftentimes even revenue, comes from 20% of their customers that are the easiest to work with, that love the product or service the most, and that like to buy again and again. Yet, we spend our budget, we don't wanna, we don't wanna alienate anyone, so we start broadly targeting anyone and everything that could be a potential customer, rather than thinking, these are the people that really resonate with what we have to offer, and I want to cater a message to them that could very well alienate the rest of the people, and that, that's totally okay. Um, that's step one, and then step two is now targeting those people appropriately and managing the budget. But that's where I see people struggling the most is this may not even be the right place to start. When it is the right place to start, they, st they go so broadly, they have no idea what did or didn't work, and most of the time, of course, it didn't work. And they're not even targeting the people that are going to be the best customer for them to begin with anyway. And so it's like, you know, I, I can predict the future in those situations. Here's exactly what's going to happen for most. Budget and strategy and, and doing it in a simple way that actually teaches us something at the end. Yeah, it's a great point. It's like, you know, if you've got a limited budget rather than going wide, because that's the thing is I want to, I need to make the most of my dollars. It's actually the, the effort, the intention of making the most of their dollars is actually making the least of their dollars. Um, yep. So when, when, when clients come to you or prospective clients come to you, do you sit down with them and identify who their target audience is, or they need to know that upfront coming in? Um, so we need to know that to help them be successful. Yes. And, uh, and a lot of companies that are very, very, very young don't even understand that yet. And we're typically not the best fit in that situation. We're, we're going to provide them a consultation and kind of point them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, absolutely. We need to know that. And now a lot of the times people uh, on the top of their head don't think they understand that information. But when we ask the right questions, they usually do, right? Right. And usually the best person for me to talk to is a founder, a partner, or their top sales person and say, who are the people you like selling to the most and why? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who are the ones you don't like selling to and why? And then we can go through that process in a relatively simple manner to say, okay, these are the people we really want. And these are the people we really don't want. Now we can just do some rev quick reverse engineer math to say, and those customers that you like, how often do they buy from you? Is it just one time or is it four or five times? What's the average? And most of them actually have it, whether they have this, the actual stats behind it or not, usually have a pretty good feel for that. On average, they either work with us for six months or they buy two products from us or whatever. And then, okay, great. Now we understand what a customer's worth to you, customer lifetime value. And then we ask the question, what's your margin? What's your margin? What's your gross margin? What's your net margin on this? Okay, based on that, how much can we spend in marketing to acquire a new customer for you that is sustainable for your organization? So if I'm selling something and, and the customer is worth $1,000 to me, how much of that $1,000 can I spend in marketing to get that customer? And we've kind of got a basic rule of thumb. If I'm spending a third of the cost in marketing to get that customer, I'm typically breaking even. If I'm spending a fourth of that cost, it's typically sustainable but not scalable because the margin isn't good enough and if i'm spending 20 percent so 200 dollars to get that customer for most business models service or product that's typically scalable i can spend about 20 percent to drive net new sales for the organization uh, and to make that happen and so then we can just say okay cool how many new customers do you want to get this month okay now we just reverse engineer that now we know what our marketing budget needs to be 
we know who it needs to be targeted towards, and we've got a really actionable goal to start working towards. We want to get five new customers. This is the budget that we have. It probably isn't going to play out this way in the first month, but here's what we're going to learn in that process. So that six, nine, 12 months from now, we're consistently getting those types of customer over and over and over again. Got it. Well, and you answered one of the questions I was going to have for you is how long does it take to do that? Because I know sometimes we we're in this instant world where it's like, I want to put something out and I want to get it back in the microwave, right? Two minutes and it comes back. Yeah. But this is something that takes a while, even though it's pay-per-click and there's a lot of a lot of talk out there about, you know, oh, this is like instant, you know, I did a Facebook ad and I did my, you know, Frank Kern, I did, I did a, I did a, an, uh, a campaign and I made million dollars over the weekend. Well, he's been doing it for a little while. So, you know, he's kind of dialed in, figured it out, but. And you know, those things are mostly embellished as well. So let's be well, honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, so when you look at, so when you look at the time frame, is to allow yourself enough time to be able to dial in. So you're talking six, nine, 12 months to be able to dial in to the right audience. So now this actually does depend quite a bit on the stage of the business. If I am brand new to digital advertising, yeah. the, the, the real answer, I'm actually really good at this stuff. And it took me about 18 months. To, mm -hmm. to dial it in for my own business. And believe me, I was very motivated to make that work. Yeah. That doesn't mean I didn't get sales along the way. That doesn't mean I had, didn't have great and bad months. Yeah. But to find some of that consistency, yeah. where I was a consistent producer of growth for my business, it took some time. Yeah. Um, if I'm brand new to digital advertising, I need to be committed. Because what happens is everyone goes and first two, five, 10,000 bucks. And if it doesn't turn into what they need it to, well, clearly this doesn't work or something's broken and they don't understand that's part of the process. If I'm, if I'm new to this, I'm committing long-term to seeing this through and I'm doing it in the right way so that I can see that progress along the way. Now I've been spending, and this is where we tend to have the most success with our customers is people that reach out to us to say, hey, I've been spending like five to $50,000 a month on Google or Facebook for the last little while and we just haven't been getting the results that we've been looking for with our agency or in-house team, or it's one of the 18 hats that I wear. Those are the ones we can actually produce an ROI typically in the first 30 to 60 days because we can come in and do it right and give it the attention and expertise that it needs. So yeah. in those situations, we expect results very quickly. Um, in a, we're new to this, you know, we're going to see results. We're not going to see the ROI that you want to see for a little while. And we're not going to see the consistent ROI that you want to see. Now, again, sometimes it happens really fast. Sometimes it takes a really long time. But on average, I'm, you know, I, I need to emotionally commit 12 to 18 months to see this program through to get where I need to go. And that's why I'm saying, like, if I need it to work in 30 or 60 days from a digital advertising standpoint, I'm already setting myself up for failure. That's, that's what I've got to be careful with is, and that's why I'm saying that's not always necessarily the best place to start. Cause that's where people just don't spend the money to begin with. If that's what it needs to be, otherwise you're just going to fail. Yeah. And what I'm also hearing is you need a designated person is not just somebody who wears a lot of hats, but somebody that's designated to work with you on that. So well, this is good. Well, I wanted yeah. you to cover that. Cause I know, I, I know that even what we, like what we covered in the beginning talking about entrepreneurship and leadership and, and building a business and having passion. I mean, that's really important, but at the end of the day, kind of like what we were talking about, you know, you need to know what you're doing, right. And that you can get results. And so, and I want people who are listening, if there's somebody out there who owns a company or is part of a company that could use your services, I want them to be able to understand a little bit of the, your philosophy so that they can go and, and, uh, and connect with you. So they do that. They go to disruptiveagency.com is your website. And uh, um, disruptive advertising. Uh, sorry. D yeah. Advertising. Excuse me. So it's yeah. disruptiveadvertising.com. And <laughs> he's only going off somewhere else. I'm like, how come? Yeah. That's not Jake. But um, yeah. So disruptiveadvertising.com. They'll go there. And uh, I know you work, you know, you've got some great. Uh, information there resources in terms of uh, explaining what you do some even some yeah. some case studies I think of of like some track the track record that you have yeah well and and here's the thing we've basically built a Wikipedia of 
advertising on Google and Facebook and how nice. exactly how to do it, how to do it effectively. We publish two blog posts a week um, about this stuff because it's changing all the time. And for those of you that are kind of interested in getting going and figuring this out, just go subscribe to our blog. We produce amazing free content because we want to help you succeed whether you work with us or not. For those that are interested, we also have developed a software tool that we will audit your accounts with the push of a button and give you a beautiful PDF of actionable items to go and work on your own. And then if you say, and I don't want to do that, that's when people hire us. They're like, I'd rather you just do that for me. And that's, that's okay. Like we'd rather see people be successful whether they work with us or not. And most companies lack the bandwidth or expertise to actually do it on their own. Hence, why we're growing and doing well as an, as an organization. Got it. Awesome. You saw my cat arrive there, a little tail in the back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Working from my brother's uh, home. There's cats and dogs and all sorts of fun stuff wandering around here. But um, Jake, really appreciate it. This has been great. And just to get to know you a little bit, your own inspiration uh you're obviously you're a great leader i know you probably would say oh, i'm still working on it but you know from what from what i hear i think you're a really great leader and and uh have a great team growing there so thanks for coming thanks on and sharing a little bit about yeah what you're doing to be able to make that happen and make that possible so it's it's great so for our listeners go to disruptiveadvertising.com and uh sign up yeah sign up for their newsletter so you can get the information read their blog and if you're ready to uh take it to the next step reach out to them um we'll have a we'll have a link on our show notes of course that you can connect to them there if you're driving go to leaders of transformation.com uh and then everything will be there uh, so you can connect with jake and um I, i'm a big believer in leaders of transformation take action you know nothing happens until you do something and so maybe today it's it's from, from what we, sh we, we talked about, what Jake shared, maybe it is evaluating, becoming self-aware you know, of yourself as a leader, maybe looking at the ways that you can grow your team. How can you nurture your team to become great leaders and, and offer something, maybe even before you know, the working hours, uh, just like Jake's doing. You can do, think about what you can do to take what Jake is doing and apply that in your life and in your business so you can have a greater impact. And, you know, a lot of times we put stuff off and we're like, oh, one day I'll do that. But, you know, one day never comes. And so uh, take action on something today. We look forward to hearing your stories of how this is impacting you. If you have questions and comments, of course, love to hear that. Leadersoftransformation.com or on social media, you can find us there. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Leaders of Transformation real soon.